um, you know, in, in the last chapter, it talks about kind of like putting it all together. And when, you know, decided to, when you got the award, the award or the fellowship, the Hinman. Uh-huh. To Heinemann. Yep. Heinemann. Yep. And just the idea of like, I'm, f- you know, you see these families that they go six generations, seven generations, eight generations back, you know, the family plot, the family cemetery. And your expression is basically, you know, yes, I'm from here, but I'm not necessarily of here. I wonder what that means. Is that a, is that a happy ending? Is that a ending still in progress? And just kind of how that, how that crystallized through, through writing this book. You know, it's funny. It's actually, I think it's always going to be an evolving uh, Mm -hmm. relationship, I think, but in some ways, since publishing the book, I feel like my connections to Appalachia are stronger than they have been cool. at points prior, like since leaving, like basically mm-hmm. in the space uh, after I left to now, um, the process of publishing this book has just like brought me into relationship with so many people mm-hmm. who have similar feelings, people who are expats. Um, we call ourselves expat Alachians, right? Mm-hmm. So don't live in Appalachia anymore, but share sort of my feelings about the place. People who are living in Appalachia right now who are like, this book is helping me make meaning of navigating this experience. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, it is definitely only generation. Like my daughter mm-hmm. is not going to be Appalachian in the same way that I am, mm-hmm. but I don't think that means there's less value to the experience. And I think for a long time, I thought that if I couldn't track it back that far, sure. it meant it didn't matter as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and instead, I think now what it just means is that like, I have a perspective that's mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm not trying to say more than that, right? Like I am mm-hmm. not this is not a book of like big claims. It's like the antithesis of inhale Like Mm -hmm. I don't have a policy platform that I'm trying to push. I'm not trying to say definitive things about Appalachia and like who it is and what it is and what it isn't. But I think what I'm trying to do is say like, this is a story of a people in a place in that moment. um, And this is what I learned from it and how it continues to shape me now. Um, And I think I feel confident in that story. It uh, it ends with with a letter, um, a thank you note from a Mr. Morris, uh, or or sorry, Mr. Morris's family, right? Yep. Um, and that's just such a cool way. And it ends with and with those words, I am home again, even if it's only home for one generation. Yes. What an ending to what an ending to to an incredible book. Um, you know we. I know you got like free throws to practice on and stuff, and we could be here for four <laughs> hours talking about all the great themes and all the, you know, each chapter, um, definitely moving the one about your neighbor in Boston and, and ideas of neighborliness, if that's a word, um, you know, the, the second amendment and what you've seen in Boston versus what you saw in, in West Virginia. I look forward to getting a copy. Like I said, I read the, the Kindle. I look forward to getting a physical copy and put it in my classroom library and kind of nudging a few students like, Hey, you want to, Hey, you got five minutes. You want to check out the, first, you know, because it's yeah. uh, such a great read. I wonder, uh, that, that's a great transition too into any future projects. Like you said, I mean, the book is, you know, a, a teenager could read it. I wonder if maybe there's a like a young reader's edition down the road. You know, I, I think it is actually pretty accessible in its, like I think a high school student could totally access this version yeah. of the book. Yeah. I have fantasies of turning that Be Like, Be like Will essay into a children's book. I feel like it would make oh, a great yeah. children's book. Yes. Or like a little like um, an, an animated short. I feel like it mm-hmm. tracks that kind of story in a nice way. Yeah. Do I have the skills to do either of those things? No. <laughs> so it's probably not going to happen. But if you're someone who knows how to write children's books or mm. wants to make an animated short, let me know because I think it'd be really good. Um, yeah, you could see well. like a, a Pixar version of that story with the no coach doubt. player um, and the no granny doubt. shot. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know if there will be other iterations of this book um mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see um yeah yeah it, it, it's it, it's certainly on its own journey i think what's funny at this point we're like almost seven months out from publication and i think my learning is that um books kind of take on their own life um yeah. and and start to do things that you're like okay like uh-huh. You go and do your thing, book. I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'm glad you're doing it. Uh, you, you have to like relinquish a little bit of control and acknowledge that that's the cool thing about it is then readers start to find it and then they share it with other readers and it really, right. um, it takes on a life of its own. 
Mm. What, um, you know, do you have any other future projects? I mean, it's only been seven months and you're probably like, I'm good for now, but anything else that you're working on? I am. I'm working on a second essay collection, also not a memoir, just (laughs) a disclaimer. (laughs) Called called not Uh, a memoir. Not a memoir. That should be the subtitle for this next (laughs) one. Um, uh, But it is tentatively titled The Book of Broken Rules. Um, And it is a book about just the rules that I feel like I internalized a lot growing up about race and gender and like ways of being in the world. And then how, um, how I like keep breaking or unlearning those rules. Mm. And so, you know, um, I feel like I don't like the phrase midlife crisis. I like to call it midlife unlearning. Um, (laughs) but I feel like I'm definitely, in a period of my life where I'm sort of looking at a lot of things and being like, why do I do it that way? Or should we do it that way? And so each of the essays is kind of looking at at that, like, what is this way of being that I was taught and who's it for? Um, And do we need to do it that way? So that sounds really cool. Wow. Yeah. Good, good luck with that. Good luck with all of, all the future work. It was uh, so cool talking to you. Like I said, uh, you know, great work that you do in the classroom. I, I guarantee those are really lucky students. And just thanks for uh, letting me get into your head a little bit and talk about this this great book. Yeah, thanks, Pete, for having me. And uh, I'll see you next year with Abraham Verges for I'm, sure. I, oh, <laughs> quote me on that. Quote me on that. Get real quick. Shout out any social media or like a good local bookstore, any places to to buy the book. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Avashia Nima. Um, you can also my website is just my name Nima. Avashia.com. Um, and you can actually get my book at any independent bookstore. Um, okay. So I encourage you to do that. Um, yes. Go to your local bookstore and get it from them. Local bookstores have been amazing champions of this book and I, I wouldn't be anywhere without them. So no doubt. Are you extremely online as the kids say? I am, I am fairly online. Yes. <laughs> fairly online. <laughs> I, I know that people say Twitter is a cesspool, but apparently I enjoy the cesspool. <laughs> I say it's successful, but I'm on there. You know, I'm not leaving. So <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> there's great. There's some great people on there too. Yes, uh, Appalachian Twitter is an amazing place. So oh wow! It's okay. it's it, it's a good place. It's not a cesspool. Appalachian Twitter is a wonderful, beautiful place. So you just gotta find your your place where you're like, this is not toxic. Uh-huh. Other things might be, but this area is not. Exactly. Exactly. Again, thanks so much, and I wish you great luck in the future. It's awesome talking to you. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate it. Take care. Take care.